was building quite well with in-person events when unfortunately the pandemic hit and we had to rethink our strategies. Um, since, the, since the pandemic started, Oregon Rain has pivoted our mo model to provide live virtual workshops, support groups, and connections to vital resources that entrepreneurs across Oregon have needed to weather this storm. We are proud to have been able to offer 51 events during the past six months, um, which is actually more we can do, more than we can do um, on the ground. So it's sort of um, a little added bonus, although it's a challenging time, but we were able to offer far more events than normal, um, including a round table, table with Senator Wyden, US Senator Wyden, where entrepreneurs were able to convey their challenges directly to the Senator so that he could take back feedback to his colleagues in DC and help influence the next round of the CARES Act funding. And one Cresswell entrepreneur, Scott, Scott Pisani, um, from Pazzo attended the session. And you can see up here in the picture, that's Scott right there. Um, and we have Senator Wyden who is addressing all of the entrepreneurs. Um, in addition, we were able to offer virtual workshops for youth and two workshops held in Spanish partnered with Huerto de la Familia um, and the Lynn Benton SPDC. And throughout this time, we have supported many entrepreneurs in applying for the Paycheck Protection Program and the IDLE funding programs. Um, and we're consistently, we're constantly sending updates with additional funding opportunities. So, and I'll go more into that in detail later. Um, additionally, we offered a, um, a six, uh, 12 week accelerator, 10 week accelerator. I'm gonna share you, um, share with you a little bit more here. So in response to COVID-19, we offered a 10 week Rainmaker sales and marketing accelerator, which was July through September to entrepreneurs across Oregon, um, complete with expert guest speakers, mentors, review sessions, one-on-one -on -one support, and technical assistance. And each of the 10 weeks was packed with in-depth information with anything from sales 101 to building your business um, with SEO and digital ads and social media marketing. We had over 93 hours of Zoom workshops, which was quite a feat. Um, entrepreneurs from 51 cities across 20 Oregon counties 113 companies participant, participated, um, and 70 companies graduated. We had 25 plus mentors and expert speakers and in-kind service, services and cash prizes. We were awarded front funds from Business Oregon via Federal CARES Act Fund to provide technical assistance to companies impacted by COVID-19, and we were able to funnel those funds to all of the Rainmaker graduates by partnering with um, expert digital marketing firm Anvil Media to provide Google ad setup, optimized landing pages, and Google Analytics setup, digital marketing resiliency kits valued at 5K per kit. Um, and I'm gonna share with you a, a quick video here. So essentially we put on this 10 week sales and marketing uh, program and we it was quite a success. Um, and then because we got this money from um, business Oregon, we passed that along to have these one-on-one -on -one sort of like digital um, resiliency kits, as I just mentioned, where Anvil Media actually analyzed all of the entrepreneurs' websites and their, their ads to make sure that they were doing well. Um, and just quickly, we decided to launch the sales and marketing accelerator because that's what we heard from entrepreneurs. We started uh, the first of the pandemic, the first month or two of the pandemic with heavy programs, a lot of um, workshops, and those were well attended, but then they sort of plateaued and we, you know, ears to the ground listening to entrepreneurs and they were saying, you know, we just need help figuring out how to do this online thing. So we were like, you know what? We should do a sales and marketing accelerator. <laughs> so that's that's how we launched this. I'm going to show you this video in a moment, but I'm going to finish reading this. Um, so if you want to watch the full uh, graduation, you can do here. And we're going to watch this little two-minute clip. Um, and we had an excellent keynote speaker, Paula Hayes, the founder of Hue Noir, an innovative makeup line for people of color. And she talked about the barriers she and other entrepreneurs face in, in rural Oregon. Um, so please definitely watch the full hour or two if, you, if you're interested to see the graduation and the keynote speaker. Um, so back in July during the application process for Rainmaker 2020, we had some entrepreneurs indicate that they were not able to attend the Wednesday morning sessions. And so I jumped on 
um, the idea of having a sidecar. So I, I actually, we would uh, rewatch the sessions that evening. So I could um, have a lot more folks participate um, that weren't able to make the session. So all in all, we're very proud that we pulled this whole thing together with only nine days of planning. <laughs> so let me play this. Um, gonna play this video for you. Hopefully it works. It's just two minutes. enjoyed the RAIN program. Uh, we've had access to so many great people and um, great lessons. My biggest takeaway was learning to hone in on my ideal customer. One thing that I learned is how strategic and creative we can get with email marketing campaigns. Rainmaker has taught me there are a lot of resources and mentors out there that I've not been accessing. And of the many things I'm going to implement, I have started with an email drip campaign to increase our membership. I loved in Rainmaker how we really got deep into who we serve and validating your market. You know, Rainmaker has really made the case for all the things that we need to do, whether they're in sales, customer relationship management. The Mermaid's Garden will grow hybrid striped bass and our fish will be grown in a sustainable recirculating system. And project into your home to truly make you feel immersed in the concert experience. Let's get together and create an adventure mindset for you. Don't forget, click the link below. When thinking about events, uh, consider the path that your customers would take on your website to move through that funnel. This idea of margin uh, can exist at different levels in the business. What's wrong about this is all of these little people should be over on this little island with the customer. Always be testing. So I always recommend starting with A-B testing. Test concept A with con against concept B. Headline A, headline B. Long copy, short copy. A friend of mine, Deidre Jones, who runs a sales program at University of Toledo, was interviewed. She said this, great salespeople don't sell. They teach customers how to buy. I really like the culture here. I, I feel like this is the best culture that I've ever experienced. I just wanted to say thank you so much. A really big heartfelt thanks to everyone that made this possible because I've just learned so much in every single session. Okay, perfect. So that was the short video just talking about the Rainmaker program. You're welcome to rewatch it again. Um, so this is just so you guys know, this is how uh, we typically format these six month reports. So um, this is a section where we show all of the entrepreneurs that we've identified. So we have 35 listed here and we talk about um, how we helped them. So you're welcome to read through that on your own time. Um, and here is the 51 events that we hosted during this period as well. Um, so here's a picture of Raj and I. Raj is one of my colleagues here at Rain, um, hosting a social media workshop for the Latinx community. That was wonderful. We had one woman translating in real time. Um, and then over here, we, this is part of the Rainmaker Accelerator. This is Seth Tibbet. He's the founder of Tofurky. So that was that was pretty awesome to have him. Um, so, and again, here are all of the workshops um, and events listed out for you. All of the 51 here, you can read through them on your own time again. Um, it goes on for quite a ways. Um, but this section is just the not notable events for the months. Um, and I'll just read through that. So we have the workshop series, including several focused on SBA funding. That was at the beginning of the pandemic. And one of them had 170 plus attendees um, across Oregon. People were really trying to figure out how to, of course, continue their businesses um, at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, a workshop on reopening Oregon, what small businesses and startups need to know, and that had 282 guests. Um, meeting with Senator Wyden, as I mentioned, with Scott Pisani um, as a representative. Um, engaging youth workshops, getting kids excited about entrepreneurship. I led that one and that was really fun with high schoolers. Um, and expanding our offerings, serving Latinx community um, across Oregon was also wonderful. 
and um, organizing uh, conversations between community lending works and city leaders in Lane County. <laughs> Um, that, I think, included you all uh, talking about the emergency um, loan funds um, in partnership with Community Lending Works. So that was great to help organize that conversation. Um, and then, of course, the 10-week sales and marketing accelerator. Um, and just lastly here, uh, this section is about funds leveraged. Um, you're welcome to read that on your own time. Um, you all obviously contribute a small portion of this, and then these are all of the funds that we're able to raise um, because of you. So thank you. And this helps org, um, uh, Oregon entrepreneurs. And uh, below, this is where we like to show the mentors that we've identified. And I only have three on here so far. So I would love to um, maybe rope some of you in who um, are business owners yourselves or have a specific skill that you feel like you could contribute um, to entrepreneurs in Crestwell. Um, so three and growing. <laughs> Um, and then here are the partners that we collaborated with throughout this time. And of course, the chamber would be on here, except that the chamber was closed down during COVID. So um, I did uh, collaborate with the, the community market and also Blue Valley Bistro during the last six months. And I had two live Instagram live entre um, interviews with entrepreneurs, which was really fun. So we had Seth and Melissa from Blue Valley Bistro and Dylan Crippen from Crippen Design. That was super fun. So you can find those um, on our Oregon Rain Instagram. And I should post them to the city of Cresswell also, actually. I'll talk to you about that after, Michelle. <laughs> um, and yeah, I just wanna talk about what's next and then um, I'm done. So what's next is that we will continue prioritizing COVID relief funding, of course, um, and recovery efforts online mentorship and online events as we work together to keep the doors open at small businesses in Crestwell and across Oregon. Um, we'll continue with virtual workshops. Um, the upcoming, actually, this was um, when I wrote this report, uh, the Google Business, Google for Business workshops were in the future, but they're actually behind us at this point, but we will probably do more workshops with them. Um, we're gonna have um, instead of a fall fest, again, I should update this, but we decided to have a, a May fair. I've been working with Chelsea Pisani and um, actually a bunch of businesses in Crestwell, the newspaper, Farmland Market, um, Blue Valley Bistro, uh, Pazzo, the Wellness Center, and quite a few others. We're going to put together a May fair on May 1st in partnership with the library doing their Maypole dance. Um, and of course, in partnership with the city um, to celebrate businesses. And hopefully at that point, things will be much more opened up and um, it'll be less of a logistical nightmare. So cross your fingers. <laughs> um, and of course, we will con do continued outreach to serve new communities, um, including the Latinx youth and people with disabilities. Continued sharing of resources tied to COVID-19 emergency funding opportunities continued one-on-one -on -one deep dives to unlock, to unlock Oregon Rain's full network potential to assist entrepreneurs. And an example there is I just started working with um, Pete Omlin, I think is his name, with the Bullet, uh, Bullet Stove Company, which is super interesting. And I'm helping him get connected to videographer, potential uh, funding opportunities. He's looking for a manufacturing space and much more. Um, and... We'll be at the ready for whenever we're able to begin offering more in-person activities, and we'll be delivering uh, more digital marketing kits via the next phase of Rainmaker with our digital marketing partnership with Anvil. So thank you all so much for having me, and thank you for believing in the power of rural entrepreneurship. Any questions? Thank you so much, Ariel, for that very, very insightful um, update. It's really helpful to get to see the work that you guys are doing and how it's affecting um, Crestwell businesses in particular. Um, so just putting that report together, I'm sure is tedious, but it's it's very helpful to us that aren't in it and don't see it. And so I just wanna thank you for that. Um, I did have a question. So we do have a new restaurant coming in. It's called Bond Me and Brews. And so when new businesses come in, do you automatically reach out to them or do you wait for them to come around or what, like, how does that work? Yeah, I had an initial, 
a meeting with him actually and helped him get connected to a few resources. That was, I think must have been back in January, if not even before that. I think I don't think we were officially working in Cresswell yet. <laughs> but I right. did I did meet with him. Um, and yes, please pass him along to me again if there's you know, if he has more questions and I'm I'm happy to reach out to him again as well. Um, and I'm sure it would be great to have him involved in the Mayfair event. So right. Right. Yeah. Um, is there anybody else that has any questions for Ariel before we move on? All right. Well, seeing none, thank you so much. And yeah, we hope to get another update soon. Great. Thank you so much, Mayor. Take All right. Care. Bye. Okay, so uh, back over to Manager Am for October bills. Okay, uh, yes, the next item is October bills. If you have any questions, I'd do my best to answer them for you. There being no questions, uh, we'll move down to the Lane County Sheriff's calls for service reports. I see Sergeant Denham is here to answer any questions you might have. Uh, Councillor Prochu. Uh, yeah, I uh, have a couple of questions. Uh, one is related to the uh, recent uh, car break-in. Um, if there's anything that you can offer up on that one, that would be my first question. And then my second one is, as always, uh, just uh, any noticeable uh, changes in our homeless or transient population. So. Uh, no real change in the homeless and transient population. Uh, I was able to convince them to uh, go hang out at Garden Lake Park during the, uh, the balloting um, time frame since we were getting reports of people feeling like they were being watched or intimidated by folks that were parked over there. So uh, they'll probably move back over to that parking lot now that uh, the election is over, but uh, no real changes in anything there. Um, as far as the break-ins, we've got uh, actually the, the call to get video has worked slightly. So not as many people have ended anything up as I would have liked, but we did get a couple of good shots from the uh, Swale Ridge neighborhood um, of some folks moving through. So we're, we we kind of narrowed it down to a time frame, and uh, um, there seems to be a vehicle involved as well as two people on either a bicycle or on foot. So there may be a, a crew of people that are going through and checking car doors. Again, it, it all boils down to every single one of them that we've taken has been unlocked. One had a, a window that was broken out already on the car, so it wasn't secured anyway, and they climbed in. Um, so, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know how to get the message out there better to people to lock your vehicles. So good, I mean, good reminder to do the 9 p.m. routine, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> lock, yeah, lock just your keep cards. putting that out there, and you know, there's not a real good alarm, or somebody asked me about an alarm or something like that, and I just basically said, well, set your set your your phone to collect the 9 p.m. routine. That's one of the best ways I think that's probably out there, unless you've got some dime, chime that you can uh, uh, put on your phone or whatever that says go check your car. I don't know. <laughs> so hopefully yeah, we'll you. get closer. We've at least got an idea of time frame and maybe a vehicle that we're looking at now um, that we can kind of monitor. So. Okay. Did you want to make an announcement about coffee with a cop? This um, month? That will be, we've moved it to the 21st at uh, the VFW, Al January was kind enough to go secure the VFW hall for us. So uh, we don't have to sit outside and be cold. Um, so that'll be happening inside the VFW and all those announcements should be out there. If there's no other questions or any other announcements, we'll move on to the city attorney report. You can see from the report that it was kind of a light month as far as using the city attorney. And then we have the code enforcement report. You can see he's uh, spreading his time out more evenly all the time amongst all of the different classifications. And then finally is the building permit report. And it's pretty um, reassuring to see that we're still getting a good number of permits moving through on a regular basis. 
And that wraps up the administrative reports for tonight. All right, thank you, Manager Amberg. Um, we have no council action items tonight to vote on, so we will move on to upcoming meetings. This Wednesday is Veterans Day, and we're doing a ceremony at the airport beginning at 10.30 a.m. Um, you can go to the city's website and get a bunch of information on what's going on, and hopefully counselors and city staff and everybody can show up and show our support for our veterans. Um, I have to work that day. I don't get it off, so I'm sorry I won't be there. Uh, November 19th is the Planning Commission virtual meeting at 5, and, and November 23rd is going to be our work session at 6, which will be virtual. And also, just to add, November 16th, which is next Monday at 6 p.m., we'll have a virtual transportation and public works meeting. And that concludes our meeting. Uh, we will be moving into an executive session meeting. Um, these sessions are closed and no decisions are made in executive session. This is pursuant to ORS 192.6602I and it's to review and evaluate the employment related performance of the chief executive officer of any public body, a public officer, employee or staff member who does not request an open hearing. So we will be reviewing um, our municipal judge and our city attorney this evening. But that concludes the open city council meeting. Thank you all.